I just asked to be taught a little bit about the breath actuated nebulizers. And um, I'm kind of fascinated by the breath actuated nebulizers, partly because I'm, I'm bothered, I'm personally bothered by all the medication going out in the atmosphere as we use the regular mask. Um, and that's just my problem. Talk to us a little bit about breath actuated nebulizers. Can you teach us a little bit about those first? Okay, essentially with a breath actuated nebulizer, the nebulizer itself only nebulizes on inhalation. On, on, on exhalation, the actuator shuts off, it stops nebbing. So um, with this one, this is designed with a mouthpiece, so when the patient inhales, they suck in, it nebulizes, but when the patient exhales, there's a one-way valve and it shuts off. So and the patient exhales. Okay, so let's see that one. Well, let's show us show the camera the one-way valve. All right, this is the actual one-way valve. Um, your medication would go in the cup, and then this is the valve system here. And then where's the exhalation port? The exhalation port on this is underneath the mouthpiece. Now this okay, is so, the so aero right eclipse, or we call it the aeroneb. To actually use the actuator part, there is a setting and you'll see it looks like the particles will kind of disperse on top. Now if I turn the valve the other direction, it will actually bypass the actuator and it will actually run like a regular nebulizer. So what's the benefits though of a breath actuated nebulizer? Well, like you said earlier, the benefit would be that every time the patient took a breath, it would get the medication. And then during the time where the patient would be exhaling, the nebulizer would stop nebulizing, so you would save your medication. So, so basically, if I'm giving someone five milligrams of albuterol, the, there's a good possibility he's gonna get most of that five milligrams in contrast to the mask that is bending into the atmosphere. Right, they'd probably get about 25, 30 percent of that. Okay, so is there data supporting that? Or is I that believe that it? there is. I can't say that actually. Okay. Look okay, for but it. But sense. that's the selling feature of the band, uh, the, the perineum. Breath actuated right, nebulizer. Is that uh, on inflation it's always active and on exhalation it's not so therefore it's going to only nebulize. By the way Lark's a respiratory therapist been doing this <laughs> for a couple of years. Um, so so when do you recommend using the breath actuated nebulizer? Now from personal experience uh, I don't like to use them unless they're children that are like grade school like your third fourth grade or in your teenagers or adults. Um, they've got to be able to, you know, use the mouthpiece, be able to uh, inhale and pull and actually trigger the actuator. Um, my experience with younger kids, they just are not disciplined or focused enough to be able to do that. Okay, so so let me go go ahead and start this. Let me. Uh, okay. Great. Oh yeah, switch that. There you go. And if you see, if we take it away from him, there's no nebulization when it's not being triggered. You see gases coming out of the bottom? It's actually fairly easy to fire it off. Mm -hmm. And so um, if, if a child could cooperate by holding it in their mouth, then I, I, I would think it would work. That, that you're right, it's probably younger children might have difficulty doing that. Yeah. You, you mentioned it, uh, earlier when we were talking about it, you thought it, it like double, tripled the amount of time. Right. Uh, if you don't have to stand or watch it the entire time, it's not a big deal. No. But, but um, it, it, if, if all the medication is being given to the patient, I can see why that would make sense that you, it's rather than going out in the atmosphere, it's going to take another 10, 15, 20 minutes for that single nebulization to do its job, right? right. To, to, to be delivered. But the well, medicines, they're getting all their medication. Unless you are actually going to have a patient that's going to use it properly, um, the cost is going to be another downfall to you because these are a lot more expensive than just your regular medication now. Okay. So there's an expense factor. Right, right. So we're always trying to minimize that. But I still am, philosophically, um, I have difficulty with the medication. I'm trying to get to my medication going out <laughs> into the atmosphere. That bothers me. So, uh, 
So um, I, I need to I need to figure a way out. <laughs> and I agree, but I want a breath actuated nebulizer that I can use a mask for, um, and uh, or I mean something that we can hold on to a kid's face. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, so anybody out there inventing these things, I want them to go ahead and get me a mask that has a has right a, uh, ability to you know change this to something where a mask can fit on. This is probably best, especially if you have a really tight asthmatic who's a 12-year-old or you know teenager or something like that, and and rather than doing like a high, you know, 10 milligram, 15 milligram albuterol, high, you know, high, mm -hmm. uh, high hour-long sort of stuff, stick them on that, and they're getting all their medication, and it's it's, it's not going out in the atmosphere. Right. Okay. Got it.